bot and there always is a bot with Autodesk software. They've got, mate, they've got more bots these days than a teenager's Instagram feed. But let's just say Autodesk Inventor's new GPU ray tracing feature for Inventor 2023, longly awaited. I may probably not quite what you were hoping for yet. Let me explain. So what this is, is here is an on-off toggle in your application options labeled as pre-release in the user interface. It feels like sort of a disclaiming to the paying customer that we're to consider this as some kind of experimental feature. Hey, it's pre-release, right? Hey, it's not finished. Well, we're just maybe playing about with this, seeking for a bit of feedback on it. But Autodesk know it isn't great. They've been transparent about that through the whole process, even going live with 2023. And it's been excluded from a lot of their official what's new product marketing material, which is quite telling. But it's still in a product that people are paying full price for. So it is what it is. And what it is, is graphics card based GPU ray tracing using Microsoft's DXR API or DirectX ray tracing. One of the primary benefits to using DXR over something more frequently used in renderers, the likes of NVIDIA's optics framework, which is the whole RTX thing, and it's that basically DXR is hardware agnostic, meaning that Autodesk aren't showing a, a preferential treatment or an allegiance to any one particular GPU provider, allowing both supported AMD and GPUs from NVIDIA to use this, as well as the long-awaited Intel Arc GPUs that are coming soon, all will be capable of using this to the best of their respective abilities. So that'll be compute-based support from NVIDIA's 10 series cards and above. I think there's a six gig VRAM limit on that. Pro and gaming cards, as well as AMD's 6,000 based Radeon cards and above. Although, if you do have one of those AMD cards, you might want to stop watching this video and go and watch this one instead, pronto. Anyway, in as much of a nutshell as I can possibly cram this into, Inventor is leveraging Autodesk's physical-based material definition known as Autodesk Standard Service, which was born out of the Arnold renderer, so it's got good heritage. And Inventor will automatically and quickly convert all existing applied textures over to the standard surface model for rendering when GPU ray tracing is enabled with no input required from the user. How successful this ends up being, how good the conversion is, and the results are, it's a bit of a lottery. What this also is though, is the first time ever inside Inventor using Autodesk's own tech that we've seen the GPU be put to 100% workload inside Inventor, which is quite the novelty. Now it isn't quite the leveled out, sustained, constant 100% workload you tend to see in other rendering workloads, but it's there, clear and obvious, no mistake whatsoever that your GPU is actually being put to work towards something productive. And it's quick, obviously it's highly dependent on your GPU, but generally GPU-based ray tracing is gonna finish computing a rendering scene far faster than your regular single desktop or laptop CPU could finish computing the same scene. That's one of the big benefits to this GPU technology. And I'm afraid that's kind of it. Yeah, that's where the good things that I've got to say about this kind of come to a bit of an abrupt ending because what this isn't is much good at all right now. Uh, sure, it's fast to create a render, sure, but what good is a fast render when all you're really doing is rapidly hurtling towards polishing a turd? Like take my Infomark rendering scene, for example. That's been rendered tens of thousands of times the world over on CPUs and was put together using those advanced materials that Inventor had in release 2021 has had for a while from the Autodesk appearance library, meaning it's a tip-top candidate, but this should convert properly. And this is what it looks like after 30 seconds of CPU ray tracing in Inventor Studio, and then viewport rendering using ART, which was the Autodesk ray tracer, CPU-based ray tracing again. And then this is what it looks like after 30 seconds on the new GPU ray tracing engine in the main viewport. Yeah, it's not great, is it? In fact, call me Mad Jack McMad, but I'd go as far as to say that it doesn't look any better than how it looked with literally no ray tracing at all applied to it. Now, at this point, in any rendering argument or discussion, the conversation would then shift across to, well, you know, well now you need to start tinkering with the with the lights, mate. You know, the scene, the materials, the quality controls, but you, you can't. There's nothing to tinker with. Unfortunately, the final quality controls for rendering an inventor extends as far as low draft and high presets. I'm not even sure that there's even any visual quality differences between these three either, or if they're basically just render the scene for a small, medium, and longer amount of time. And your mileage may vary, but for the majority of the materials and the conversions, they just come out flat as a fart compared to the CPU results, void of any true to life or inspired lighting interaction. Reflections are all muted out. And this, in this particular example, the scene is far too dark when compared against the identical created CPU render. And it was all done using the plain room IVL of image-based lighting that you get with Inventor. And as you've seen, it looks great with CPU, but a load of hee-haw, mate, in GPU. 
If you switch over to a different IBL, it can look a lot better, but the actual object lighting still looks terrible. Like Autodesk state in their documentation that currently it's a known issue that some materials will look too dark. Okay then, which ones, right? All of them? This was paint. Like surely paint would have been like top of the list of priorities of materials to make sure it comes out kind of looking good from the start. Either way, like for like, not a great start. And it doesn't end there, I'm afraid, mate. Inventor's GPU ray tracing engine doesn't currently support any of the processes or workflows that you'd normally need to go through to make any of this any better. The critical one, of course, being lighting. You've just got none at all. No control over lighting. You're constrained to using the global lighting, which is cast out from the background image, which you can change the overall exposure on, not that it makes much of a difference at all, really to the quality control of the scene. But of course, you do have though, don't forget those invisible comedy or bonus lights attached to the scene, which are about as effective as a tenancy contract. Just do not be gaslit by anyone into believing that those four lights are of any use. You can't position them properly. They barely shine any light. There's nothing you can do with them. And may even some of the preset backgrounds that have got extra lighting in them, like the likes of empty lab, they're not supported. Just like photography, lighting is essential to rendering. And unfortunately, there's just no scope here at all for any custom lighting. And that extends through as well to incandescent or emissive materials, often used for like object lighting, such as like representing a light bulb or lighting strips, light bars, that kind of thing, right? You, you take an incandescent material, you apply it to a modeled object. Inventus still has various supplied standard textures called, for example, LED on, which should be a light emitting texture, but Inventus still refuses to accept the fact that these are supposed to emit light and therefore the LED is in fact, it's not even off. It just comes out looking like a flat plastic. Another lighting based issue though that the current GPU ray tracing implementation has is its startling inability to cast a ground shadow. Now ground shadows are kind of important mate, they really are. They create scene depth, definition, perspective and without a ground shadow well your product is basically just floating in an empty void of computer generated nothingness which is unfortunately kind of exactly how your renders end up looking. With the CPU based ray tracing engine, ground shadows are fully supported as they, sh they should be. I think that's asking for too much. Uh, the cast onto the configured ground plane, it's not the origin planes, there's a ground plane there. And staggeringly, this was left out of the GPU ray tracing engine, as well as reflections on the ground as well. You can, of course, model something yourself, a physical modeled object to represent the ground, like I did with the Invmark scene, which then leverages object shadows onto the ground. But then you're left with having to sort of visually see the edges and the extents of that ground object, which looks absolutely gash. So there's that. But that though, isn't half as bad as this next issue. Inventor's GPU ray tracing engine currently doesn't support images or decals. It's pretty fucking deal breaking. A decal is where you take a bitmap or a JPEG or like an image of literally anything, mate. It could be, I don't know, a warning label for industrial machinery that you want to have on the side of the product or a serial number or more to the point, the actual product branding, right? Or your company logo. You drop that image into a 2D sketch in Inventor and you essentially stamp it onto the face of the modeled geometry using the decal command, burns it into the model, and it's then rendered in the, or the output render. Except it vanishes from the face of the earth when GPU ray tracing is enabled. So unfortunately, at this point, you can forget all about creating like product images for websites, sales imagery, anything where you need to show your branding or a placed image, because you, well, you can't. And do you know what else are decals? Inventors threads on bolts and any type of fastener. Threads don't show up either in renders. Thanks. One thing you can do though, which sounds super cool on paper, is leverage denoising or the noise reduction algorithms for automatically denoising grainy areas in your render. Compromises a bit of detail in those areas for a faster render. Except it's a bit shit. In fact, it's a load of shite actually. As you can see here, enabling noise reduction does barely anything for the noise and the reflections. In fact, let's go looking at this, I'd go as far as to say it looks like it's actually creating noise in the reflections. But the drubbing goes on. Unfortunately, this GPU rendering engine is currently limited to still images only in the viewport, meaning there's no ability whatsoever to create any animation using GPU ray tracing. So there's no animating constraints, no positional representations, no animating parameters or component fade in, fade out, that kind of thing. And you can't go over to Revent Studio, turn on all that stuff, and then turn on GPU ray tracing in the background. It just doesn't work. It just disables all the studio stuff. And then when it comes to the actual render output, don't forget, after tinkering with all this clever looking stuff, people still need to export an image. Well, 
the exported image is basically a print screen of your viewport, which is, which is a bit of a hack. I mean, how am I? Man? Like when you save out your wonderfully average looking GP ray traced image to a bitmap, it's so print screen that it even burns and keeps the XYZ triad in the picture. And if you've left your mouse hovering over a part in the model at the time, all the model edges show up highlighted in the final export and render which is easily avoided, but oh man, it just feels proper junk. So look, at the end of the day, yes, you can create a render now using your GPU and Autodesk and render, but fact of the matter is, mate, it looks like a bag of dicks compared to what you could have always done using the CPU ray tracing engine and nothing remotely close to what you can get out of Inventor Studio, which is unreliable and a bit unstable, but it's got camera effects like depth of field, local lighting, it's got animation support, decal support, Sure, you've got to wait significantly longer for the render to finish, but given the limitations of the GPU engine and not being able to render out decals, threads, that kind of thing, at this point, it's like, why would you want to use it? I think I'd rather wait for something that I can actually use than have something quick that I can't use. But in conclusion, rendering isn't typically, never has been a click and go immediate solution. You've always needed to prep the scene, work on it, get the materials right. You can spend a considerable amount of time doing all of this, and you normally do. And in all honesty, I'd always argue that if your render does look shit, then yeah, get cracking on that render prep, mate. But you see, the, the pro but there's two problems here. The first one being, like I've spent the majority of this video complaining about, there's nothing you can do for render prep. You could spend a ton of time swapping out textures for ones that might look good and work well with this rendering engine, but this is your production engineering model. The appearance styles you've got here are the ones that were assigned to the materials you're gonna be manufacturing it with. Who's got the time to swap out dozens or potentially hundreds of textures from production materials just because the GPU renderer doesn't play nicely with them. And you're not gonna be everyone's pal in the office. You're, you're not gonna be popular, mate, if you're the one who's went through hundreds of thousands of parts in Autodesk Vault, quick change them all, in an attempt to make your render look good. But that aside, rendering an inventor probably doesn't even register in the top 20 list of priorities that the average user uses it for. So expending all of that time, again, just to make a render, mate, it's just not gonna happen. Bottom line is, it's clearly far from finished. And unfortunately, it's so below par right now that I, I just hope that enough people who try it now and think it's not good enough will come back to it after initially writing it off on first impressions. But by all accounts, we've got good guarantees and assurances that it will improve over time from Autodesk, hopefully sooner rather than later, like in 2023.1 maybe. You know, it'll be tweaked and iterated on, maybe moved over in, in Inventor Studio, hopefully, which could potentially be something quite special, providing Studio plays nicely with it. But this is calling it out on how it is now, which is pretty much day one of the 2023 release, which to be honest, mate, is the first and last day that I'll have the checkbox ticked for this feature until such time that it looks as good as the CPU results, at least on existing data. I'm not asking for, you know, or even expecting 3DS Max or VRED levels of granular render control, but, you know, decals and images pretty mandatory, as is the ground plane, sort that out. But most importantly, get the lighting right, and that'll compensate for the fact that the developers will have their hands tied with legacy material support. That must be a nightmare. Or better, better still, mate, add an alembic object and substance support. Just like that. So there you go. Uh, it's the GPU ray tracing feature for Inventor 2023. Going off script a little bit here. This, uh, I know the Inventor developers watch these videos, and they probably will be a little bit either frustrated, annoyed, or maybe disappointed. Uh, this feature has been given such a canning. I'm not dismissing, demeaning, undermining, or playing down the amount of hard work that would have went into this feature. Uh, I'm just not personally a massive fan of features going into software when they're completely, obviously, blatantly unfinished. And it is what it is. That's how it was. That's how I've seen it. This video is made to just advise the general user base what this technology is like right now, what to expect and what not to expect. I understand the work and the challenges that well, I don't. I probably I, I won't. I won't understand the work and the challenges, but I I imagine there are some exceptionally difficult challenges to get this technology into something like Autodesk Inventor with the age it is, the amount of textures dating back so many years. Try and convert those. It won't be an easy feat, but unfortunately, as it is right now, it's just not great and it's not very usable. But I'm hoping it's going to improve over the coming months, and I'm hoping in maybe six to eight months' time, I can make another video like this look back and say, hey, it's in a good place right now. We're good to go. But anyway, that's Inventor's GPU ray tracing support for Inventor 2023. That's the state of play. If you're looking to subscribe to Inventor 2023 or any other Autodesk product, mate, and you want to help support this channel for more videos like this, next time you are going to subscribe to an Autodesk product, use my referral link in the description first. And then when you subscribe to a product after that, it'll give me a kickback referral at no cost to you, but it helps keep my channel going. Thank you very much in advance. My name is Neil Cross. This has been Tech3D and I'll see you in the next one. Toodles.